Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're it's always a, a pleasure and an honor to introduce the speaker today. Uh, when, when she started coming to the chapel uh, and the growth that she's done and went through the program here uh, was pleasant to my eyes. And I know the words that she's going to today is going to be pleasant for your eyes. Never marshes in. Well, thank you, Reverend David. Thank you, Reverend Cheryl Ann, for that beautiful meditation. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The, um, the topic that I've chosen for this month is love, sort of. I had decided that since there's 12 mind powers, I wanted to focus on one mind power per month. And I have my list, and... Um, it was, that's from the Metaphysical Principles course. And the first one on the list is understanding, and that's what I focused on in January. And so the second one on the list is imagination. But February is the month of Valentine's Day, and everybody's talking about love, and we had the heart meditation today. So I thought I'd kind of focus on love and use my mind power of imagination to come up with what I wanted to talk about. So some of you, some of you are in the seminary right now and um, you're possibly preparing to be able to speak at a Sunday service. And how do you imagine that experience is going to be like? Well, the, the very first speech that I did here at the chapel was in February of 2005 when I was in the seminary. And the topic of that first, very first speech was love. And I remember so well how terrified I was to stand here and speak on a Sunday. What will I say? Will it have meaning? Will I stay focused on the metaphysical principles? And now here I am all these years later, and you don't scare me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you might not think that that's such a big deal, but to me it's evidence of change. And taking a look back and recognizing change is an amazing thing. And change is the one constant that we have in life. We're constantly changing, whether we're aware of it or not. And in hindsight, I think that I could have affirmed that I am confident and self-assured a whole lot more back in 2005. <laughs> well, one thing that I find absolutely fascinating is how unique every one of us are. When I say the word love, each and every one of you has a unique definition based upon your own experience in life. And I remember Reverend David saying in so many of the classes that I was in, how did you learn to define that word? Or how did you learn to define that concept? Just hearing the word love can bring up all sorts of images within each person. The physical life cycle of the human being is kind of unique in the mammal world. There are some mammals that are born and they're able to stand or run. Some are even able to swim very shortly after birth. And I'd say that most mammals are dependent on their parents for at least for a while. But human babies are dependent for nearly two decades. And in some families, even longer than that. <laughs> at any rate, we humans learn to define our words and our lives through the ways that we experience life. I think the word love can be one of the most misunderstood <clears throat> and at the same time one of the most powerful words that we use. And love is something we redefine over and over and over as we move forward on our journey. The mind power of love is a powerful force that we associate with the heart area of our bodies. And if you breathe deep into your chest and think of the most positive, powerful, healing, love feeling. You can feel that wheel of love energy activating deep within you. 
a wonderful healing energy comes forth in this area. If you focus your breath into this area and think of the harmonious, balanced aspects of love, like healing, compassion, harmony, and peace, this energy builds and sends a vibration out into the universe of healing love, compassion, peace, and harmony. Used in a positive way, the mind power of love is an unbelievably powerful healing force. The relationships that we experience very early in life help to shape how we learn to interpret what the words and concepts that we use every day mean. And those experiences shape how we focus on and activate our mind powers. That's why it's so important to use wisdom and discernment and to be open to continually move beyond what we know now. I know of a, a man who had two sons and because of his upbringing, he never felt able to tell his sons that he loved them. And this tormented one of the sons. All his life, that son kept waiting to hear his father say, I love you. Both sons grew up and had families of their own. And one day the dad had a very serious heart attack. And when that one son went to the hospital, he was hoping that finally at his last moments, his father would tell him that he loved him. He even asked his father to please tell him, but the father never said those words. The two brothers grew up with the same dad in the same house, and one brother was devastated because he was certain that his father never loved him. The other brother knew without a doubt that his father loved him because he always felt it through his father's actions. He just always knew that his father's love was there for him, whether it was spoken or not. <clears throat> These were two similar experiences with two very different understandings, two very different results. One person had feelings of being unloved because of the lack of those words, and the other had been open to embracing the love through day-to-day -day interaction. When I think of this story, it reminds me to look at my own relationships and to ask myself if I'm expressing myself to people that I care about in a way that they can understand. It's not always possible to reach people if they're not open to receiving, but I can work on my own awareness and openness and act accordingly. On bumper stickers, I sometimes see things like, Love God, or God is love or honor God. Religions sometimes teach that God is something outside of ourselves, something out there, somewhere separate from us. But I had what I call my awakening experience many years ago. And ever since I was a young girl, I had taught myself to block experiences that I had that I guess I could only describe as paranormal in nature. And it wasn't until I was in my late 40s that I decided to open up to my experiences. I was so afraid of what would happen to me that I got prayer of protection from someone who I had read about that had experiences that seemed kind of similar to mine. And meditation had been recommended to me, but I felt I needed to protect myself first. I, I needed to protect myself somehow before I could do something as scary as meditation. Yeah, I was, I was afraid to meditate. Anyway, as I started saying the prayer of protection that I was given, I would say it over and over and over. And one night I woke up in the middle of the night and I found myself trying to remember the words to that prayer. And I remember struggling to remember those words. And all of a sudden, I was out of my body, and I was in this amazing light. And it's hard to describe that light because it was beyond anything I could possibly have ever experienced before. 
I could feel myself going deeper and deeper into this light, and I could hear a voice more powerful than any voice I had ever heard. And the words were words that were familiar to me, ancient prayerful words. And I knew that at this moment that I was in the presence and light of God. And the powerful words that I was hearing, that God voice, it was my voice even though I had never heard my voice sound powerful like that. And I knew at that moment that I was not separate from God. I was going deeper and deeper into that light, so excited that all my questions were going to be answered. And then I remember thinking, where am I going? I don't know what I'm doing. I have a husband and a son who need me. And I said, I'm not ready, I need, I need to go back now. And I was immediately back in my body in my bed. I knew at that moment that God was not separate from me. God was within me and within everyone. And I knew that there was a God force within each of us that is so incredibly powerful that it's beyond description. And I knew in that moment that my life would never be the same. The idea of being at one with God and with all things was so foreign to me that it was, it was a little scary. My journey eventually led me to this chapel, and for that I'm really, really grateful because studying here has helped me to get to know myself and empower myself beyond what I had thought I was capable of. I had actually found a place that teaches that God is within and that we're not separate from God. Once I became more comfortable with that knowing and learned more about my own self-worth, then the idea of being at one with everything was an honor and a comfort, at one meant with God, not separate from God, but actually at one with that creating energy, at one with myself. So when you see those bumper stickers, God is love, or love God, or honor God. Be reminded of that divinity within and know that you are love. Love yourself, honor yourself. What do you say to yourself when you look in the mirror? Try greeting yourself in your mirror as you would a beloved friend. Try saying things to yourself like, you are such a great person, or I love you, or I like you, or you are beautiful, or you are handsome. When you learn to truly love yourself, understand yourself and the divinity that is you, then understanding the divinity within others follows. Value the imagination within you. Not all things are visible on a physical level. You are an infinite well of information and wisdom. Divine creation is within you and within your imagination. You are creating your life day by day, moment by moment. Choose to create with love, compassion, peace, and harmony, and the world becomes a more loving, compassionate, peaceful, and harmonious place. Thoughts become words. Words become action. Action moves imagination from the invisible to the visible. Create the best within you. Focus on your goals. Pay attention to the ideas that you have. And then take the loving steps necessary to create it. As you realize that you are a powerful, loving, eternal, spiritual being with the creative force of God within you, then you realize that you have the ability to create loving, healing energy. You can send this healing, love of heart vibration not only to yourself, but also around the world and back. Create the vibration of healing, loving energies of compassion, peace, and harmony within yourself and within your home. Then notice the ripple effect as the vibrations of compassion, peace, and harmony spread. Live it. 
and notice it. You are divine. God bless you. You are a blessing. Thank you.